Welcome to our broadcast. We are thrilled that we have the opportunity to come into your life today. And I hope today that God speaks to you, is everything that you need for Him as our time together. Enjoy. If you're able, would you stand with us in honor of God's Word today? Hide and go seek. We've laughed and now I want to, I want you to capture this today. God came and so it's, this is the whole thing. If you don't hide in Him, it's impossible to go and fulfill what God has for you. It starts with hiding, okay? Psalm 91 verse 1, here it is. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Before I pray today, would you, would you agree with me that for the next 30, 40 minutes tops, I know we're a little long, we're doing a lot of stuff today. Would you seek God out today to hide in Him? No matter where you are in your journey, maybe you're on the, the best mountaintop you've ever been on spiritually. Would you hide in Him today? If you're in the lowest valley, wherever you are, would you make that commitment? Just to be aware that God, wherever I am, I'm going to purpose to hide out with you. Talk more about that. Let's pray. We thank you, Lord. Simply my words to be yours, my thoughts to be yours. And every one of us would find that hiding place today. And maybe, we, maybe we'll reconstruct it. Maybe we'll build up the walls again. Maybe we've allowed the world to, to, Lord, just to push us away from that intimate place with you. Help us, God, today. We'll give you praise in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen, amen. You may be seated. Everyone in this room, I would imagine, has played hide-and-go-seek. Somebody stands, they close their eyes, they count to 10, they count to 50, they count to 100, and the rest of the group goes and hides somewhere, and then you go seek them. It's a great saying, but we're not going to play hide-and-go-seek today. It's basically a, a playoff of words. I do believe today that we're as busy as we've ever been. There's a lot of going and there's a lot of seeking every day. Regardless of your age, it's happening. School's back in. We, yeah, we got one more holiday, but we're back in the grind. Everybody's going. Everybody's seeking. But I wonder how our hiding is doing today. When I think about hiding, of course, one of the first things in my Christian experience that comes to mind, a book I read years and years ago and seen the movie, all that is the story of Corey Ten Boone, who wrote about her life in her autobiography is defined and titled The Hiding Place. If you don't know about, much about the Ten Boone family, they were known to hide the Jews from the Nazis. It's an unbelievable story. Unbelievable detail. Many people today, we think we have hardship. We need to go read stories like that of what people were willing to do. But it was Cora Ten Boone who said not only was that the hiding place based on them hiding Jews from their demise from the Nazis, but it was also based in a, in a, in a verse in Psalm 119, 14, 114 that says, Thou art my hiding place and my shield, I hope in thy world, in thy word, excuse me. Hide and go seek. An overview today that I want to share with you is just, just to put some things together. When I think about hiding, I want to say without reservation that there's always a need to hide. The first question that comes to mind is hiding a part of God's plan. And see, in our world today, there's something just, we almost look at it as a negative when somebody's hiding. Please see further than that. Because there's several words and conditions and environments and events in our culture, in Christianity and spirituality, that deal with this hiding issue. Think about these kind of words. First, we call today the Sabbath day. Now, I'll tell you, just if you do a research, you don't have to go far. You can find it on Google, and you can find out that in biblical perspective, and the Word of God says, today is the first day of the week. You know what man did with it? Man said, no, no, no. Sunday's going to be the last day of the week. Monday's going to be the first day of the week. I've been guilty of saying that. We always think about Monday and it starts off a new week. But isn't it amazing that in God's Word, the first day of the week began with the Sabbath? Let me tell you why I think that's so. Because God wants us to hide with Him before we go seek all the pursuits of this life. And when we think about it, listen, not only the Sabbath, <laughs> man got a hold of that, but there's another word, and you're in it today. There's another word we call the sanctuary. A sanctuary is defined as a place of refuge or safety. If you go and look up synonyms of the word sanctuary, you'll find words like a hideout or a hideaway or a getaway, some place of solitude where we, we, we are different than our normal things. Think about it. When I think about what goes on, whether it's the Sabbath or the sanctuary, 
There's another word we call a sabbatical. A sabbatical is defined as a getaway. You know, a lot of times, that's, many times it's just used in church, but other people do sabbaticals. I've heard stories of people who are writers and they take a sabbatical to go somewhere and finish a work or whatever. But a sabbatical, something we do different. It's a getaway. Now, in our world, in Christianity, in our relationship with the Lord, you can call that your devotional time. You can call that your prayer time. You can call it like we've done today. It's worship. It's when we come in for corporate worship. We have a sabbatical. We're laying aside all the pursuits of this life and, 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 and all the cares of it, and we come in and center on God. It's even called the altar. The altar is a, is a sabbatical. It's, it's a sanctuary, if you will. And let me tell you something. There's time to time we take stands. The altar's not going anywhere in Lakeshore Church. There's people being, I said, I just don't think, do we have to do it that way? All I can tell you is this. Listen, it's just me. The greatest things in my life happened at an altar. I was saved at an altar when I was seven years old on a Sunday night. Hmm? At the age of 14 at a summer camp, God spoke to my heart about putting a call on my life to be a, a minister of the gospel. And I went to an altar and, and said, God, I didn't say it this way, but I've thought it a few times. Do you really know what you're doing? But I received that at an altar. It was at an altar when I committed my all to be not only Him to be my Savior, but to be the Lord of my life. It was at an altar when I pledged my undying and unwavering love to Suzanne. Some of the greatest things have happened at an altar. It was at an altar when there's burdens in my life that you bring burdens to the altar because burdens are lifted at Calvary. Some would say it's symbolism. Some would say it doesn't need any place. But I'll tell you this, whether you participate in an altar in a church, I guarantee you if you have anything with God, you're going to have an altar in your life. You're going to have a place in your life where you meet God and God meets you. You have a place in your life where you touch God and God touches you. It can be anywhere. For several years of my life, it was riding down the road for all, all practical purposes. It was amazing how if I could get alone... If I could have tranquility and, and centered on God, cut the radio off, cut all the noise out of the world, out of my life, that I could hear from God and could have sweet communion with Him. There's always a need to hide. The, the Bible's not absent. But there's many. I just talk, I thought about two, but there are literally dozens. It was Daniel, I believe, that the lines were no problem in his life because he had a hideout with God three times a day. Sometimes we look at the lines and we think of the, the issue was the lines. The, the issue was the hiding place. And when Daniel had the hiding place in order, the problems came along, didn't do what everyone thought they would do. It was Moses that had a hideout. He had killed the Egyptian soldier. He ran for his life, but he ended up in a place called Midian. You might remember the word Midianites. That's where they came from. It was 40 years Moses was, his, it was in Midian that was preparing him to be the great leader that he was for the children of Israel. God's always had a hiding place. I'll say it two or three times in the sermon. How's yours? Great conviction has come over my life because this day and age people have just treated it like you don't. We can go enough and we can do enough and we can expend enough that we think that satisfies the hiding place. I want to stand in 100% disagreement to that today. You start in the hiding place and then God prepares you for the rest of it that comes along. Remember there's always a need to hide. Secondly, not only about hiding, but I want to talk about surviving here for a little bit. When I think about that, Psalm 91, 1 comes to mind, our text, committed to memory a long time ago. If you didn't realize today, we've been, talking, we've been preaching out of the King James, but here it is. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I wonder how many people today, I've asked you just to consider this, what you need today is the secret shadow in your life. We rip and we run and we wonder why things don't add up. We wonder why there's no substance that lasts. We wonder why there's no sustaining peace in our life. We wonder why we're at wit's end all the time. We got every diagnosis there is. There's stress and depression and all these syndromes and all this. And, and we go to the doctor, we don't even know what to tell him. I wonder how many times our life is out of sorts because God's waiting in the hiding place that prepares us for going and seeking later. We maybe are guilty that we've substituted going and seeking and doing and being, accomplishing something rather than the time we spend with Him. Don't miss this today. There's a great story in Scripture, and I want to read it to you. It's the story of the prophet of Elijah. You might remember the story. I was privileged to actually stand and sit on Mount Carmel when we went to Israel. The story goes, you remember how it was happening that God... Elijah told all the prophets of Baal, y'all show up. We're going to have a duel. We're going to find out who's God's real. 
and they made an altar and they poured water on it. And that was a great, if you remember, it was a drought. They took just barrels of water and they put on the sacrifice and they, they prayed. Elijah did that. The prophets of Baal, they spent all day. Even Elijah was making fun of them. And they were praying to Baal and Baal never showed up. And then he prayed to the God of Abraham, <laughs> Isaac, and Jacob. And it says there that the fire fell and it consumed all the sacrifice. And out of that it was a great victory for the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they took all the prophets of Baal and they killed them. Later on you'll hear in the story that Ahab finds out about it. He tells Jezebel. I don't know if y'all know this or not. I, know, I have a few Jezebels in my life. I don't want to go into that today. But Je Jezebel was a tough woman now. She was bad to the bone. Somebody said she was a dude at. You know what I'm talking She was a bad dude. But listen to me. This is what's found. And I want to read it so that I, you don't miss something. And God will bring glory and honor His Word. But listen to this. Ahab, verse number 1 of 1 Kings 19 says, Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, where he belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. Listen to this. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. Sounds like a hideaway, doesn't it? And came and sat down under the juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And as he, as he lay and slept under the juniper tree, behold, an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baked on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the Mount of God. Think about it. How are we going to survive this? Let me tell you how you survive. I don't even need to know what you're going through, but let me tell you how you're going to survive. You're going to survive in the shadow of the Almighty. In this day and age, in this political correctness, oh, to call people to an altar, that's embarrassing them. Just let them go their way. And all along we're promoting. If we don't watch it, we're promoting getting away from the hiding place and just going and seeking. And you know what I know about going and seeking when you don't have a hiding place? You run on low and you run on empty and it doesn't make sense. And after a while we just go, there's nothing to this religion stuff, so I'm going to go do my own thing. And we might do it the wrong way. I'm calling you today to a hiding place. I'm calling you to a place today that says, Oh God, if I've broken down and I've compromised that and I've been going in my own strength and I've been going wide open and I don't start it with you and I don't stop it with you, then God help me to do the right thing the right way in my life. How are we going to survive it? How's, how are people going to survive this life without a hiding place? I think the more you dig, you'll find out that we're not. We're really not. Let me show it to you this way. Unique way. One of the neat things that I got on my trip to Israel was a prayer shawl. Prayer shawls are made, and they're not commanded to do some. It's an observance for the children of Israel. But a prayer shawl is made, and it has 613 threads in it on purpose. Around it, they make these, these threads. And those 613 threads represent God's law. And so as they wear this, they're basically saying, I'm under God's law God's protection. I'm living what God wants me to live. And they wear it a couple of different ways. The men wear them. They can either wear it on the outside like this, or many times I saw it in Israel, they would be underneath their clothes and you, could, you would see the tassels hanging out. Let you know they were doing that. What's the significance of it? The prayer shawl, and I want to show it to you. This is how they pray. When they get ready to pray, they would pick the pr prayer shawl up and they would put it over them. Some we even saw they pray like this. You know what that says to me today? We have so many worldly distractions. I don't know if you're like I am. I have to get in a place of solitude. I have to hide out with God. And today if you realize one thing, if the enemy can't make us bitter, he'll make us busy. And many times we'll say, well, we don't have time for that. And I'll tell you what I do, and I talk a lot about it, but we want the drive through don't we? <laughs> Man, I want to go through it. I'm upset if I don't have my food in a couple of minutes. Suzanne likes to go to restaurants, and she, this, I don't understand this. This is like we're from different planets, and people wrote books about that, and it makes me understand it. We'll go to a restaurant. We've never been there before. Don't even know. I can't even read the stuff on the menu. And Suzanne will ask a waiter or waitress, what's your favorite? And whatever they tell us, like nine out of ten times, Suzanne orders it. 
Listen, that's not me. No, 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 no. I like vowels. I like Kroger. I like buffets. And I'm not just talking about my girth. I like to walk in somewhere, and as soon as I walk, that's the reason I like Chinese food. I mean, I like Japanese food. I like to walk in, and as soon as I sit down, I don't even sit down. I'm telling you, I just want an unsweet tea, and I'm headed to the buffet. Because why Suzanne's ordering, I've already got, dig I've already got indigestion going on. Because then we can go do something different. But you know what the Word of God says? The Word of God doesn't say go through the, it doesn't say go through the drive through Mm -mm. It doesn't say that, that we need to be fast and quick and at our best and wide open for God to bless us. It's not what it says. If we're going to survive this thing, we're going to talk about thriving in a minute. We need to understand this. The Word of God says, they that wait upon the Lord hmm, will renew their strength. See, we do it backwards. And we want God's blessings on our life. And I'm talking about Jay. Hmm. We want God's blessings when I do it backwards. We think if I get tired enough and I go enough and I'm, and, and, and I'm expend enough, then God will say, God, a boy. You know the conviction of my heart? Jay, where you been? You'll never be the pastor that you need to be if you compromise the hiding place. You'll never be the person that you need to be if you compromise the hiding place. I saw them do this in Israel too. I would see people that'd be praying this way. You know what that does? I quit seeing all that out there. Hmm? Let's see. Isaiah 40, 31, as we transition to thrive, says this, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Not only are we called to survive this life, but listen to me, church, we're also called to thrive in it. Hmm. God's got enough people with the mully grubs. Poor pity me, I sure am tired. Whew. I need a vacation. I need a rest. You know what we need? We need to thrive in Him. And get this now. You know what thriving does? And the whole concept, if I wait on Him, there's something that miraculously happens to the weights of my life. Hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm weighed down. How's your hiding place? I'm telling you guys, it works. Peter referenced it this way. He said this, cast all your care on him, for he cares for you. In other words, back up the truck of your life. If you've got cares going on, God's waiting in the hiding place for you to unload your cares on him because he cares for you. Hmm? Some say, man, my, my, it, it really is hard. I, I'm way down. <laughs> we might be telling on ourselves, haven't we? Aren't we? Because you know what that means? We haven't unloaded it on him. His yoke is easy, and his burden is what? It's light. So, so, so the heaviness of it is on him. Well, Brother Jay, you're saying there's not going to be things come along. You know better than that. Jesus said you're going have have, to have trouble in this world. But what else did he say? Be of good cheer, for I've overcome the world. Here's another thought. If, he's, if, he's, if we're going to have trouble in the world and he's overcome the world, then he's overcome the trouble too. He's got to give it to him. It's to me. Thriving. Now think about that. I don't know how it happens, but some kind of transference does happen. Listen, they that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. Watch this now. Sometimes there's a need for us to soar. Other times there's need for us to run. Other times there's need for us to walk. When I think about that verse, it covers all levels of life. God didn't call every one of us to soar. You know? God, God didn't call every one of us every day to run. He didn't call us every day, every each one of us. There are going to be different levels of stuff that comes along in our life. But you know what that verse does say that's consistent? They that wait upon the Lord. The NIV translation says hope, if you have that. If you have a whole Monday day, it says trust. So they that wait upon the Lord, they that hope in the Lord, they that trust in the Lord will renew their strength. So that when you need to soar like an eagle, there will be enough there because you're waited on God and God will empower you. When you need to run, when you need to walk, whatever measure that you need, God's enough. Listen, we're going to wind down this way. Listen to this. When I think about hiding, when I think about 
what God asks of us. I'll say this as compassionately as I am, but without backing up. I think it's extremely dangerous in the Christian faith to always go and seek without much hiding. I believe it. I believe if we substitute activity for relationship, it might not get us today, it might not get us tomorrow, but it's very dangerous. Because how will you know? How will you know the heart of God? How will you know the direction that God has for you that day? And the reason I can speak so succinctly with clarity out of this is where I am. Let me give you some examples. We fill cars up before we go. We service them before a trip. You wouldn't leave on trip. You wouldn't leave in a, on a trip on empty. If that car's missing and you've been having trouble, if you got a slack tire, you're not fixing to go on a four, five, six-hour trip. Oh no, you're going to do the pre-work. The pre-work with God is waiting on Him. You with me? I, you know it continues. I think not in our whole creation as well. You know, we're going to wash our clothes before we wear them. If you didn't today, shame on you, okay? The person beside you knows it. I just want you to know that. I'm a prophet. But anyway, we wouldn't go anywhere without washing our clothes. That's ridiculous. But you know what? How is it that we're going to serve God? We're going to be seen of others? Hmm? And we don't start in the hiding place. We like our snooze button too much. We stay up too late doing what we want to do, so therefore we can't spend the time with God that we need to. Let me tell you what I saw at 8.30. You often get the benefit of this. I had numbers of people came up to me and said, I felt as great a conviction today as I felt in a long time. Because you know what I found out? Oftentimes, and I'm guilty, the thing that we need to compromise the least, we compromise the most, and we wonder why things are the way they are. We wonder why we're dry. Hmm. We wonder why we, we, we haven't heard God's voice with clarity in a long time. We wonder why we haven't seen a move of God. Could it be that we've sacrificed the thing that we need the most? Hmm. Great example is Jesus Himself. The Scripture says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, He that knew no sin became sin for you and me. So He had some going about Him, didn't He? He left heaven to come pay the price. Let me also tell you this. We also know that He came to seek and to save that which was lost, says in Luke 19.10. So we know today that Jesus had some going on His mind and He had some seeking on His mind. Would you, would you agree with that? You know, it's amazing. We find with Jesus, the Son of God who knew no sin, He hid out on a regular occasion, on, on a regular basis. <laughs> Before the cross, Jesus knew it was coming. He's already told folks it happened just like He said it was going to happen. Jesus finds Himself in the Garden of Gethsemane by Himself. The, the ones closest to Him are asleep. And Jesus came back to Him and He said this, and I want to change one word, I think it's accurate, even doing it. Hey guys, couldn't you hide out with me for one hour? When I need you the most, couldn't you hide out with me one hour? Go read that story, it's very compelling. So Jesus in all of His going, and Jesus, all of His seeking out you and me for redemption, all that He did, we find Jesus hiding. Make sure that He had it in the right place, in the right way. How long has it been? This is where we end today. Blake, are y'all ready? I have a little different invitation for you today. This is what I want us to do. What I want us to do. Let's do it carefully. How long has it been? Are we guilty that the hiding place is just set aside? But boy, we've got the going and the seeking down real well. How long has it been since you've come to the hiding place? Not just for today. This is the sanctuary. We can be beat to death out there in the world. It's supposed to be a place where I come in of refuge and oasis when I get here. Hopefully that's been the case for you today. But listen to me also. What about your hiding place? All oh, that has no part today. All I can tell you, I don't know how it happens. But you let me be weighed down. If I'll spend my time with God, something happens. So what I want us to do today, and you have to be in a hurry. The song's about four minutes long. How long has it been since you've come to the hiding place? 
Nobody's writing your name down. We don't keep, keep up with numbers of how many come, people come to the altar. But you know what we've gotten good at church? Listen, I've had people tell me this. I've had people on the, the cutting edge tell me there's no place for the altar today. You're, hurt, you're hurting people's psyche when you invite them to come to an altar. Really? Really? The hiding place. Hmm. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. How many times I've come to an altar just like this, and God met me there. I will not apologize for that. Nor will we take them out somewhere and talk to them in a room because you need the hiding place today. Hmm. I wonder how many people I wish I knew. I know a good many. I know people in here that are fighting for their life. I know people in here fighting for their marriage. I know people in here that, that hope they don't go to work next week and they tell me they don't need them anymore. I know all kinds of situations. I've been your pastor over eight years. But I wonder what I don't know about. But you let me tell you the difference. <laughs> the difference when we come to the hiding place and we know God's in control. We know God's got it. When God's carrying my burdens, when I know I'm right with Him, let them bring what they want to. I'm going to win because I have a hiding place. It wasn't the lines. No. It was the hiding place. <laughs> it wasn't Pharaoh. No, it was Moses' hiding place. You know what? It won't be what you go through. It's going to be whether the hiding place is what it needs to be. And I'm going to, we're going to start it out right today. Hmm? Just come and go. As they sing, Brother Jay, I want to come to the hiding place. If, if you might not think it's real, test God and see. Test God and see. Step out from the public and have a private time with God and see if God won't meet you there. <laughs> Done it too many times. The hiding place. And then we go from this place to my hiding place at the house. Every day, I'm going to be what God wants me to be so that I don't miss my going and seeking for Him. Hmm. If you're able, will you stand with us? Hey, let's do this this way. Be seated. Stay seated. Because they're going to sing for a while. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to pray at the altar today. You need the hiding place. Brother Jay, I just need God to do something for me. Maybe you've sought Him a hundred times. Maybe this is a brand new thing. What's that crazy preacher talking about today? Just remember this. Hide and go seek. You can't, you can't go and seek if you don't have a hiding place in your life. A personal relationship with Him. We're going to give you an opportunity to do that personally today. You can just get up from your seat. You can come. You can pray. Sing, guys. And then we'll close in prayer.